Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another exceptional podcast on the Sanity Project podcast. The purpose of this podcast is for you to discover a life of clarity, confidence, and success. Our guest today is Lucas Root. Lucas Root is an accomplished speaker, entrepreneur, and business success mentor with over 19 years of success across banking, technology, investments, health and wellness, athletics, and interactive media, also called gaming. And Lucas specializes in speaking to entrepreneurs and business owners on getting their strategy on track for success and massive growth. Well, Lucas does help audiences identify roadblocks to success, and for you special listeners, Lucas has created something new for you today. Would you care to tell the audience what you're going to present to them? Hi, Joanne. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm I'm excited to to share. Yep. Um, uh, I've I've spent the last couple of days um, putting together a framework for how to successfully work from home. And your audience gets to hear it first. Well, congratulations to you for writing this. And good on everyone who is listening because they're going to get this information probably before the majority of of the rest of the world. And I like the topic, how to work from home and be a success. Is that it? Yeah. And I have yet to read anything really good in this topic area so far. And I think the world has had enough time to write a grand article. So I'm glad you're here and sharing it with us. So is this a step-by-step process or is it, how how are you presenting it to the audience? Yeah. Um, The the way I have it laid out, uh, and this is, I guess, sort of just the way I think about things. So um, I hope that works for your audience because this is just the way I think about it is um, we, we go through phases when we're learning to get good at something. Um, and I think that's just normal human behavior. Um, so I've identified each phase of going from, you know, a work from home newbie to being a work from home pro. Um, and then I've identified. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that's good. It's, that's fresh. That, I didn't even write that. That's what happens when you talk in a conversation. I like that title. Yeah. Try that. Thank you. I will. Thank you. I like that because that covers everybody. And also it's, I like that. Yeah, that one feels really good. Good. That's way better than what I was thinking before. Well, that happens. You know, (laughs) as a sidebar, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I write uh, posts uh, four days a week to my (laughs) list. And it goes out to the list on the appropriate time that I've scheduled. But when I get ready to post it to other locations, I I change it. I change the title, not all the time, but Mm -hmm. I go, good God, what did I write? And I like, no, let's put these words in there, take those words out, a little bit of editing. And I change, I usually change the title. Yeah. It just happens that way because, you know, we change. Yeah. But I think that's a great title. That's a that's a pretty sweet one. Thank you for 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 conversa- for having that conversation with me. Yep. Okay. Move forward. Yeah. So, um, and I've identified four separate phases that that people will have to pass through, um, and and then I've identified what you're going to learn in that phase, and as you learn and implement those things, that that's going to help you sort of graduate from that phase into the next one. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, so uh, do we want to talk about that now? Yes. Cool. So phase one for the, the brand new, I've never worked from home before and, and uh, COVID-19 has me home. Uh, phase one is, is what I'm calling distractions. And everybody knows exactly what this is. It's the, it's the phase that honestly is the reason why your boss, if, you're, if you work for a corporation, is the reason why your boss doesn't want you working from home. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, you get up in the morning, you go over to your computer, you sit down and, and, uh, log in 
and there's Facebook left over from your from your uh, meme hunting and um, looking at family videos last night. And you get sucked into Facebook. And honestly, Joe, and you and I probably still have this problem. Um, the difference between you and I as work from home pros and, you know, the average newbie is that you and I have a routine in place. And we use this routine to protect us from that distraction. And that's why I'm calling phase one distraction. So the the key to move to accepting and growing through the distractions that phase one is, is building some routines. Um, the first routine is a way to kick off the beginning of your day. Now I'd like to correlate this to a normal work day where you go to the office, because the truth is while most people don't do their morning routine intentionally, there is a morning routine. You get up, you drink coffee, you eat some breakfast, you take a shower Uh, You get dressed, you hop in the car, and you drive to work. Um, You didn't build that routine in order to create the best version of you, but that is the routine you have, and that's how you kick off the start of your day. And so your psyche knows that you have arrived at work, and it's now work time. I think that that's really important, that people do these... um mostly unmemorable actions. They take these actions on a daily basis and don't realize it's part of a routine Yeah, that focuses them and, uh, and brings them back to earth each and every day. And, you know, many people can't finish, uh, start their morning without a cup of coffee, for example, <laughs> which you brought up and other things, but, you know, they get in the car at 8.01 and they get at work at 8.30, they clock in, whatever, they do this, they do this mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But if they have to work from home, it may change. It may change. I don't think they'll take that shower every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I typically don't take my shower in the morning. I do take two showers a day every day, but I typically don't do it to start off my day. Um, Interesting. Is there a reason for that? I've, you know, I've been working from home for five years and I've been, um, I've been customizing my routines uh, through testing, you know, moving things around. These, these are things that are healthy and helpful uh, how does my day look if I move this thing from the morning to midday, for example? And I've just found that I perform better by taking my first shower of the day sometime around 11 a.m. Oh, that's that's my area, 11 to 1. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, because, well, number one, I don't want to disturb the glow of waking up and meditating and all that jazz because the shower <laughs> takes exactly. you. Exactly. I mean, truthfully, the shower takes you to another uh, planet. It kind of does, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It cleans. It does so much more than wash the body. And again, people don't understand that. And that's probably why they're taking their showers are probably too short. They should take them a few minutes longer than what they're doing now. But it just sort of blanks everything out and you're a clean slate. Well, I don't want to be a clean slate in the morning. I've got plans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I write my lists of, of the next day's tasks my high value activity list the night before, not the day of. I and do that, the same. Yeah. And that's a pattern. Yeah. And for me that works because then I don't have to concern myself. I, I don't like panicking about what am I going to do today? Cause I always have things to do. I can always write. I can always, always you know, something. there's always yeah. something. I've been working from home for a long time. And yet I'd like to have written lists and they're on a piece of paper with my pen, not on the computer. Mm -hmm. I have a belief that the neurons feel it in your body, you know, and then it goes to the brain and then it takes over. And nine times out of 10, I get up in the morning and I have solutions for all of those lists, for all of those activities. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You can use it. Yeah. Oh, I do. I, um, I don't typically do it quite that way, but I do it. Yeah, it just it works that way for me. I mean, I trust my intuition a lot, so that's a factor. But however, I have noticed over time 
that that's what occurs. I've realized that mm-hmm. if I write it by hand on a piece of paper, one, two, three, four, maybe a few more additional things that I need to remind myself of the following day, my body and my brain, because the brain doesn't sleep all the time just because I'm asleep, yep. and it's working. It's working on many levels. Yeah. It's solving my problems. Yeah. Now, I, don't want, I don't want to interfere with your time to, to get the four phases. So let's make sure we get the four phases in first before we talk anymore because now my listeners are going to go, Joanne, you're talking too much. <laughs> Aw, but I'm enjoying this. But yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, a morning routine. And for your brand new newbie world, I would recommend that they make their morning routine as close to what their normal go-to-work routine looks like as they can within reason. So take your shower, drink your coffee, um, spend 20 minutes sitting in silence. And this is a great time to implement meditation, but you would be doing this anyway when you're commuting to work in your car. Do the same thing, but do it from home in a more intentional manner. Yeah, people don't, um, real, people don't realize the benefit of commuting. Yeah, it, I, until you start working from home, you, you have no idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, And then do the same thing at the end of the day. So when you close out your day at five or six or whatever the end of your workday is, have a routine that's similar to your end of workday that that, um, when you're coming home from the office. Spend 20 minutes in sitting in silence. Um, You know, spend a little bit of time maybe drinking some water when you get home. Talk to your wife or or your, your husband or your kids about your day just like you would if you were coming home from work. I'm and with that, you. Yeah. And that tells your psyche again, that your work day has ended. Um, and then the second piece of this phase, this distraction phase that you're going to have to implement in order to be able to move through it is a segregated workspace. Um, and, and this is really important. Again, you have your office, you go to your office, that is effectively a segregated workspace. While you're working from home, you need to help your body and your psyche know that you're in your workspace. One, kicking off the day and ending the day with your routine. But second, stop using your workspace for anything else except work. Totally agree. Yeah. So that's phase one, distractions. Um, And that's how you'll get through that. And then phase two, I'm calling this the extended groove. Um, Now, I think a lot of people romanticize the idea of an extended groove because, you know, the occasional time that you work from home, let's say on a Friday after a business meeting, you get into this super deep groove and you get a a ton of work done before, let's say, 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. You'll amazingly accomplished and it's great. The thing is that When you get into that super deep groove, you have a couple of risks that you need to manage. Number one, it's so easy to treat absolutely everything as a distraction, and that includes drinking water, uh, you know, taking your bio breaks, going to the bathroom, um, even stretching your legs or your back from sitting down for long periods of time. And I I have done this um, numerous times, and that's why I created a phase for this. It takes a little while for you to implement systems using tools in your life to make sure that this doesn't happen to you routinely, because if it does, you're going to find yourself crashing on your couch at 2 p.m. That's happened to me a couple of times until I realized I just cannot write for four hours. Yeah. Because it's too easy. And I always tell people, you know, move away from your computer every 30 minutes. And I didn't pay attention to my own guidelines. <laughs> yep. And that's what happens, of course. And that's how I continue to learn. <laughs> and um, it's very important for people to understand this. I think that newbies might not get it right away. But once they crash, they will. Once they crash, they will. I, I completely agree. So for the, for the brand new, straight, fresh out the gate, work from home newbie, they might be thinking that getting into this extended groove is like, that's the golden ticket. That's when you've really mastered working from home. Um, and so I, I just want to say it's not. <laughs> this, is, this is phase two of four phases. You haven't mastered it yet. You've got to continue working through this and turning this into something that's beneficial for you now. You, Joanne, you just mentioned that your ideal groove time is about 30 minutes. 
me personally, my ideal groove time is about 60 minutes. So I can sit at my computer and stay totally, totally focused for 60 minutes. But if I routinely go over that, I'm going to start to see significant reduction in, in overall productivity because of that. And the quality of what you're doing diminishes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, the brain goes enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, the brain and the body say, hey, give me a break. Because when people who are working at home, they don't realize that if they're at the office, they move around more frequently than they do when they work at home. You know, they leave their desk, they go visit somebody else's cube, they go to lunch, they're walking around a lot. You know, mm -hmm. they're talking to other people all the time. Well, not all the time, but depending upon where they work, they're communicating with others. But in order to do that, they have to shift their butts off the chair. That's right. That's right. And I'm glad you brought it back to the workspace. I'd like to, just like the last one, I'd like to correlate this to going to work. Um, number one, think about how often you have meetings that you go to a meeting room. So that's two minutes of walking that you've gotten up, as you said, Joanne, shift your butts off the chair. That's two minutes of walking that you've gotten up to go do. And then you're going to sit there in that room for 30 minutes. And then you're going to do another two minutes of walking to get back to your desk. And those two minutes of walking that you've spaced out throughout your day, it's incredibly powerful in terms of, um, one, helping your body remain a biological being. And then two, it helps your mind put a close to an open loop that it's had. And this is sort of going back to, to a piece of what you brought up earlier, Joanne, where you like to load your brain up with a couple of problems and let it just start solving those. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really useful tool to spend a little bit of time loading your brain up. And we do this naturally at work when we go to a meeting. We're loading our brain up in that meeting with... Um, a problem, typically one, but sometimes more than one get talk, get discussed at a meeting. And then when you get up at, at the end of that meeting and you walk back to your desk, your brain knows that that two minutes of walking closes that loop and allows it to move from the front of the brain where you're sort of capturing information into the problem solving part of your brain. It's, it's an incredibly powerful tool, and I think people will find it to be very beneficial if they start to use that intentionally. Additionally, um, most people, whether they need it or not, go take a coffee break um, in the morning and in the afternoon and a lunch break. And it's so easy when you're working from home and you're still a relative newbie to just blow right through those times because you don't have your coworker coming over saying, hey, we doing coffee now? And when people are at, at, at a job, at a company, in a building, they sometimes leave the building. Yeah. That's why I tell my people, when you have lunch, go out. You don't have to go out to eat. Yeah. Eat your lunch and then walk. Or sit yes. outside on your porch. Whatever works, but you have to change the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. That's a, that's a great point. So for me... Um, the tools I use, number one, I have a reminder on my phone every 60 minutes um, during my work days. It says, go take a two-minute walk every 60 minutes. Um, additionally, I do twice a day, 20-minute coffee break walks, and I don't actually drink coffee. And, you know, I, I work from home. I don't, I don't have anyone to go on my coffee break walks with. Um, but that, that 15 minutes of coffee break walks it's just like what I used to do when I had an office and I would go to the office. And then you brought up lunch, Joanne, and I do the same thing. I, I eat lunch away from my desk and I take a walk with that lunch. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so those are the tools that I use um, in order to make sure that I don't go too deep into that extended groove, which is my phase two. Uh, Phase what? three. Go ahead. We're on phase three. I'm glad about that. Yeah. People need, I'm, uh, I'm excited about because you're giving a master class to people here. You do know that. Oh, yeah. That's what you're providing, which is going to be a good course for you to do as well. But that's just me. Um, <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, this is good. This is good. But this is a master class, and that's, I'm, I'm going to market it 
as a master class. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you and your audience got it first. I'm glad too, and they should be extremely grateful. You hear me, people? Be glad. (laughs) Go ahead so we get three and four in because I'm excited about listening to what these are. So phase three is training. You've, you've identified the challenges in distractions and deep groove, right? And then we've identified a couple of tools that are going to help you move through those. Phase three is when you start to turn that into a skill and you train yourself on that skill. Um, for me, one of the biggest pieces of that sort of training process is testing. Um, do I want to take that walk, that 15 minute morning walk? Do I want to take it at 10 o'clock or do I want to take it at 1030? Do I see a meaningful difference in my productivity as a result of that? And you'll see it quickly. Um, what does my morning routine look like if I get up, get dressed, uh, take a shower, shave every single day, just like I normally would, or are there pieces of that morning routine that maybe can be left off and I still have just as much productivity? So that's what I call training. Um, Just like if I were training for archery or uh, soccer, phase three is training for working from home as a, as a master skill. I see that. That's, that's interesting. Now I know why some of the people I work with are going insane. (laughs) (laughs) Because they, they don't like working from home. They like the social interaction, and I myself am a part-time introvert, so it doesn't bother me. Mm. Um, you know, I have enough outlets. Uh, but I think people, they need to train themselves to work from home. This is really important. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not an ability. It's not something we just are granted when when our boss says, yeah, go ahead, start working from home. And all of a sudden we level up and have it. Now the the leveling up comes as a result of um, work and integration and um, information, the information you and I are providing right now, but they still have to do the work. And Mm -hmm. that's what phase three will be. It's that, it's that repetition, the cementing of those routines and, and the utilization of the tools and then starting to test whether or not um, the basic routines can be improved. So for example, my morning routine now, very much like yours, I think, Joanne, I meditate, um, I drink cold water, uh, I do some journaling, I read a book. All of this is entirely by myself and entirely quiet. I don't listen to music. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't play a, a meditation track. All of this is 100% self-internal work. It's my morning routine. And that's what kicks off my day. You and me both. I'm very quiet. I don't drink cold water, but I do drink two glasses of water in the morning. And I don't drink coffee mm-hmm. either because I don't drink anything but water anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't drink tea, any kind. But I, re- I meditate. I read. And it's all quiet. My phone is locked off. I don't accept phone calls until after a certain time. Usually, well, whatever, it doesn't matter because people get, oh, she doesn't pick up her phone. Uh, but my phone is locked in the morning for me. Mm-hmm. And I just have my own routine that has worked quite well. And sometimes when people try to interfere with my routine, they take their life in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, do not call me. Do not have, there's no, there are no emergencies before a certain time in the morning, even from my family. They know, especially they know. But I think it's important. Okay, let's go on to phase four. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. Phase okay. four is what I'm calling smooth sailing. And that's where you've finally got all of the routines. They're working for you. You've got them greased in as a, as a, let's call it a greased groove. So you know that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to work into your morning routine and you don't have to question that. Now, here's what's key about phase four. We did training in phase three, and that was to build the foundation of this as a skill. But in order to become a true master, now you have to start to experiment. This is where you bring in things like do I do better throughout the day if I do 20 minutes of yoga 
in the morning. Um, you and I, Joanne, we've discovered, and this all happened in phase four, we've discovered that we do better with our shower in the middle of the day instead of the morning. So this, I'm, I, I think it's very important for this to start happening in phase four. For those newbies, you should be taking your shower just like you would on a normal day in the morning. You don't start experimenting with that until you have a baseline and you understand how much your productivity is changed by moving things around. Mm -hmm. Right? So phase three training, you're building that baseline, that foundation so that you really can start to measure the value of shifting things. Phase four is when you start to test. Yeah, that makes absolutely total sense. And, And measure. And, you know, for those of those of you that are, yeah. Yeah, measuring is measuring. Uh, one of my clients or one of my friends, I should say, says a measure for him. Measuring is everything, and mm-hmm. you know my brain doesn't take measuring in in its specific word. I just figure it out that it does or does not work, mm-hmm. and that you know that's my bottom line. No, this doesn't work for me. Therefore, it's it's out the window, but. Yeah. People, you can't experiment until you've trained yourself to apply certain activities, certain, you know, do you want to, you know, is, you know, is, do you want to do X? Does it fit with you? Would you rather eat your breakfast and have your coffee at eight o'clock in the morning or at 10 o'clock in the morning? And then, you know, you look at your body too, because I think people who eat breakfast, that's another thing. People who eat breakfast too early eat a lot more food throughout the day. And if they could uh, move their breakfast time a little bit later in the day, they might be healthier too. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But don't do that until you've got your until you've got your routines and your systems and tools all greased into a groove. That once you've moved through that phase three training, that's when you start experimenting with things. Well, as I usually tell my audience more than once in a po- every person's podcast, is re-listen to this podcast. When you re-listen to this podcast, if you work with paper and pen, have it available to you so you can take notes. If you work on the computer and take notes there, open up your Word doc and start doing it. If you use another program for taking notes like Evernote or something like that, have it accessible to you. But it is important that you take notes. You will not remember everything that Lucas has said, guaranteed. You'll go, oh, this one, this one, this one, and it'll be out of sorts. It has to be, you know, these are the rules, one, two, three, four. And four is the number for foundation anyway in the oh. In numerology, it is. Yeah. And that's, you know, I relate everything to a good foundation as if you were building a house, which, you know, everything can be built on top of a four-point frame. So, people, four parts. Do number one, then number two, then number three, then number four. Don't go to four first. You know, don't go to the end of the book before you've read the book. (laughs) So, okay, now I'm thinking my final question would be something like, what would be, you know, the first thing you would tell our audience to do, but you've already told them four things to do, actually more like 40 things to do. Yeah, kind of, right? Kind of. So if you were giving them some macro, a macro view of the four steps, what would you say for them to do like right now, as soon as they've finished listening to this two or three times and passed it on to their friends and associates and former department heads, et cetera. What would you tell them? What is the biggest thing that you could tell them right now to do? Just do that step today. What can they do now? Um, A morning routine, a lunch routine, and a, and a close the day routine. I, I would say do those three things first. Um, you, you'll get the biggest bang for your buck. Those are probably the most critical pieces of the foundation of the success of this, of this framework. Yes, because this is amazing. Okay, people, you can find Lucas Root at lucasroot.com. It's L-U-C-A-S-R-O-O-T. His email address is info at lucasroot.com. And it's a great website. It has a lot of information, but it also 
gives you some direction to take. I think he provides a free something on his website and just download it. Do what you need to do to follow the Yellow Brick Road. I want to tell all the listeners as well to go to askjoannevictoria.com. You can get a copy of one of my books. It's free, The True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life. And I also have a report on five steps to life work harmony. So everybody have a great day and enjoy yourself and enjoy this recording. Oh yeah, go to Apple and give Lucas Root a five-star review, okay? because he deserves at least five stars, but that's all Apple provides. Take care, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care, and thanks for being here.